Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to another Adobe XD Masterclass. My name is Howard Pinsky, Senior XD Evangelist here at Adobe. Under full New Year's, and hopefully you took some time off to relax and spend some time with the family. Want to big give a big hello, good afternoon, good morning, good evening to everyone joining me live in chat. Umicorn, Gal, Drew, and Moenda, Wade, Tanya, tuning in from. If you're on Twitter, hello, Twitter friends. Hopefully the stream over there is looking okay. It was buffering a little bit earlier. Am I the only one lagging? Oh no, is it lagging again? I know the Twitter stream is lagging. I might have to kill that one. Oh, wait, uh, nope. Yep, maybe. Could be. I don't know what's happening. For some reason, there's been a lot of lag uh, going on lately. Hopefully it's uh, pretty rough for me. Hmm, I might have to kill the Twitter stream. Let me do that. There's always something, right? I'm going to kill the Twitter stream. It's evened out on, oh, it's okay at the moment. Okay, maybe it's, uh, maybe it's me, maybe it's Twitter. Nobody knows, but I killed the Twitter stream and um, hopefully that resolves some problems. Let me actually remove this. No lag for me, no lag. Okay, maybe we're good. We might be okay. Anyways, Twitter stream is killed, so we don't have to worry too much about that. But anyways, anyone on Behance, if you are tuning in live, let me know where you're tuning in from. I'd love to hear it. All right, so what we're going to do today is we are going to dive into our 78th Masterclass. Let's go ahead and hop over to my screen. And I did post this on Twitter. If you're, uh, Behance is better now. Okay, good, perfect. So I posted this on Twitter yesterday, and we're going to be starting the process. Of course, Twitter's video is a little bit pixelated, which is never fun. But we're going to be starting the process of building out a smart home experience for a mobile device. We might transition that over to possibly a desktop dashboard at some point as well. A while back, Twitter mentioned that they're going to be improving video, but this does not look doesn't look very good, does it? Mm -mm. Can't see anything. It's all pixelated. Anyways, Twitter needs to improve. Like I mentioned, we're going to be starting the process of building a Pro Max. We're going to be and Brian from Nairobi as well. You know, in the chat, I will be taking a peek from time, is start dark mode type of experience here. So I'm gonna select the artboard and then over on the right hand side in the properties inspector, it's buffering again. Hmm. Everything looks okay on my end. I don't see any heavy buffering. Oh no. Let me take a quick look at something. Give me one second. I'm going to turn this off. Heavy buffering. Let's see. Yeah, that looks fine. That looks fine. Yeah, I, I don't see any issues on my end. Let me do a quick speed test as well. I'm getting decent speeds. Of course, the upload speed was really what makes a difference, but... Hmm. I'm going to have to definitely look into that. Maybe it's going to be fine. Hopefully it's not not uh, my end. But anyways, I'm going to continue and hopefully the replay at the end will be uh, buffer free. Maybe, maybe not. Anyways, so we have our artboard and I'm going to go ahead and select the fill over the right hand side. And we're going to just add a little bit of color. Now, of course, you can go solid color, something, you know, in this range here, maybe add a bit of blue or you can add a little bit of Drew is asking, but it was what it should be. All right, so we've gone ahead and set up our artboard color. And now let's go ahead and start at the top and then we're going to work our way down. So on an next view of something like that, a title and pop here, about 46 pixels from the top, something around there. There is the lovely notch. Hopefully one day we won't have to deal with the notch. And what we're going to do, let me actually put that back just for now, is right about here, we're going to put an icon to maybe view all of your devices and then we'll have a title and then a profile photo on the side. I'm also going to drag out some, there we go. And then what I want to do is find an, a few icons. So if I hop over to Nucleo, which is a third party icon manager, paste this in. Perfect. And I'm going to change the color to, I could go either a pure white or I could introduce a little bit of color just so it's not too jarring because we are on, it's refreshing again. Oh no, still buffering. 
I'm really hoping it is, will you be following Apple? Let me see. That looks, you see, everything looks okay on my end. Hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. Still buffer. Interesting. I'm gonna see if I can fix this in just a second. Let me... Okay, let me very quickly restart the stream and Okay, so I restarted the stream. And hopefully things are looking a little bit better. But I'll, I'll, I'll wait until the chat uh, lets me know. And uh, so far smooth, okay, change a few settings. I don't know if just restarting uh, factored into things, but we'll see the joys of live streaming. Anyways. All right, so we have our icon at the top left-hand corner. And what we're talking about is, you know, we're on a almost a pure black background. And if we go pure white, certainly good for accessibility, right? But sometimes you might want to introduce a little bit of color and drop it just a little bit. So it blends in a little bit, but not too much, right? And if I take a quick look at the preview, it's looking okay. It might be a little bit too small, but it might work. I'm going to bring it up just a touch. Now, speaking of Apple uh, guidelines, someone was asking earlier, um, one thing you want to keep in mind, especially for buttons and elements like this, is they recommend that you have about 45 pixels, somewhere between like 42 and 46 pixels for the actual hotspot for the, uh, you know, the tap. So if I go ahead and draw out a rectangle or a square, let's go about let's go about 45, right? And this doesn't actually have to be seen. So you can put it behind this icon and just drop the opacity to zero. That app with actual users, they won't miss it because, you know, they just missed it by a, a very slight amount. So they'll actually be able to, you know, tap in this whole area here and they'll be able to trigger that interaction. Now, moving over to the center, we may want a title to let us know that, um, you know, that this is their home screen or their home or whatever it might be, right? So if I grab my text tool, shortcut key T, I'll type out something like home sweet home, just to have a bit of fun with this. And then in terms of the actual typeface itself, there are many directions you can take this. You can keep it very simple and do something like Helvetica, right? probably wouldn't recommend it, but it's not terrible. I'm also going to add this color here to my document asset, just so I have it easily accessible and I can always make changes to this later on. Or you might want to get a little bit fancier with this particular title and do something like maybe belly display, which is an interesting serif typeface, right? You might want to drop the size a little bit. It might be a bit too big. And you certainly have to be careful with these stylized display typefaces, especially when you're getting quite a bit smaller. So this home, you know, the title at the top, it could probably work. These display typefaces are definitely meant for much larger displays, right? Landing pages and things like that. This might work, possibly. Definitely have to test it with users to make sure that they can read it. But uh, the smaller you get, the more difficult it's going to be to actually read these. So keep that in mind. And then finally, over to the right hand side, we may want a profile photo. So with my rectangle, I'm going to draw one out. Maybe I'll round up the corners just a little bit by pulling on these handles. And then I can go ahead and hop over to my Creative Cloud libraries. I do have my toy faces in here. And I'll go ahead and drag one directly in. Now, of course, whoops, you can drag a photo from Finder if you have one. You can use a plugin like UI Faces to add a profile photo, but this one looks pretty good. Perfect. Okay. Now it's a little bit 
big, uh, smaller, I think, than this menu over to the left. So I'm just going to make sure. Actually, it's not too bad, actually. It looked a little bit smaller when I was previewing it, but it looks like it's about the same size. Hey, Katarina, welcome. All right, so we have our top bar complete. I'm going to make sure to go ahead and group these elements. And then we can start moving on down. Now, the next thing I might want on this particular home screen, maybe a quick way to switch between your different rooms. So on a smart home application, you might have, you know, a living room, bedroom, kitchen, basement, so on and so forth. So we can start setting that up. Now, I'm going to start the process. Let me bring my guides back by dragging out a rectangle. And this is going to be for our first room. And this could be our living room. Now, I'm not at the moment too concerned about the size of this particular rectangle because we're going to be using padding, we're going to be using stacks, so it's going to automatically resize as we're designing. Now, this one is going to be the active room, but what we're going to do is we're going to set up the inactive first, and then we will switch one of them over to active. So in terms of the color, let's start with... Now again, this is going to be inactive, so we don't want it too in our face and jarring, but we also want a little bit of contrast in there, right? Maybe I'll add a touch of blue, just a little bit. I'm going to round at the corners, somewhere around eight, eight might be a little bit too much. It's not terrible, but it might be a bit much. We'll see what that looks like as we continue designing. And then to really help separate it from the background, we may want to add two things, possibly a border, right? Now, of course, you don't want something this striking. So maybe I'll just drop it to about 10%, maybe 8%. And then possibly we may even want a bit of a drop shadow. Now, when you're working with drop shadows, you probably don't want, you know, 100% opacity for a drop shadow. You want something nice and subtle, somewhere around maybe 24%, depending on the color behind it. I'm going to bring and blur it just a Might still be a little bit too much in terms of the border and the color. Inside, we whether it's a bedroom, a kitchen, living room, so on and so forth. What we were talking about earlier about the display, it's definitely a little bit difficult to read. Bold could look pretty good. And then right below this, I might want to drop this in size. I'm going to drop it in weight as well. Possibly regular. We'll see without these text layers in place. What we can start doing is setting up the actual container and padding. So if I select all this information here that makes up this particular element, I'm going to place it into a group. You can also place it into a component as well. And you can do that over within the properties inspector to the right. Press the plus button. And there we go. Now, over to the right, still within the Properties Inspector, we have our stack and we have our padding. Now, at the moment, we only ha really have one row of items because we're going to have one over to the right as well, which is where the icon is going to go. But we're going to turn a stack on, which is automatically going to turn padding on as well. So what I can do is I can now make sure that we have maybe about 16 pixels on both sides. And I'm going to add a little bit on the bottom. Perfect. That could do. I might want to actually bring this up a little bit. Great. So now at the moment, if you take a look over within the Properties Inspector, the stack is set up uh, vertically, you know, top to bottom. And that's because when the stack was enabled, XD looked inside of this group or component, and it took a note that there are two objects going top to bottom. Now, of course, we want these to go left to right, because we do want to add an icon over here to the right, and we want it to automatically kind of shift over. Audio is desynced. Oh my gosh. We are having so many issues today. Hopefully it's just uh, a few people. But we're going to have to look into that. Now if I were to grab my ellipse tool and just add one here. You're going to notice it places it above. Right? Oh no, it's not just a few people. It's, it's everyone has audio desyncing issues. I wonder what is going on. I really haven't changed too many settings. Hopefully it's like a YouTube thing and not a me thing, but we'll definitely have to figure this out. And um, let me take a quick peek at something. YouTube is not a receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming. Well, that's not nice. 
Hmm. I will certainly look into this. All right. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to group these two elements. And then we want to switch over from vertical stacking to horizontal stacking, right? And this will allow us to dive in here and now grab the ellipse one more time and add one over here, right? And it's going to maintain that 16 pixels on the right hand side, very similar to the left here. Kung Fu is strong today. Thank you, Reverb Mike. Um, obviously referring to the terrible audio problem that we're experiencing. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. There we go. And what we're going to do now is we want to add in an icon to this particular element, right? So I'm going to start by changing the background color just so it's a little bit darker. Again, maybe add a little bit of blue in here. And on top of this, we want to add that icon. Now, if I were to hop over to, let's say, Nucleo, right? And let's find maybe a couch. And I were to paste this in here. here whoops. You're going to notice it's going to paste over to the right hand side. And that's because, again, we have a stack enabled. So any new objects will kind of paste over to the right. So what we want to do instead is just like the text, we're going to group this. And then inside the group, we can go ahead and paste. And that will allow us to move it directly on top. I'm going to turn off responsive resize and set this to a lighter color. And I may even bring in this color here so it's not too jarring again. All right, that could do. So we have our first component in place. And what's nice is we can very easily, you know, create additional ones going horizontally across. And if I wanted to, I can always change the padding over here to the right. I'm going to go ahead and group this particular component. I'm going to call this rooms. And then even though we have a stack on this component, we can put a stack inside of a stack. So I'm going to turn stacking on. We do want horizontal and I can dive in and simply duplicate. And this we can dive in here and change this to, let's say, oops, that was the main component. Don't want to edit that one. Bedroom. And maybe there will be five devices in here. And then we can go ahead and change out this icon. Just like that. Again, turn off responsive resize. Grab that color and perfect. Drew is asking, what was the icon library for the couch? So that was in the Stockholm uh, icon library. I did download that and license it from UI8.net. They have a lot of really nice uh, icons and sets over there. And then finally, we're going to do one more. And this might be maybe the kitchen. And let's say maybe maybe there'll be a whole, you know, a ceiling full of particular lights or something. So there maybe there'll be 12 devices. And then finally, we want one more icon. Kitchen. Or maybe food. Nope, nothing there. Let's check what we have. Cooking. Here we go. That could work. Which icon is going? There's a chef's hat. Maybe. There's a pan. Oh, maybe the fork and knife. That looks kind of nice. Where did the icon go? Did I not copy it properly? Probably not. Where is it pasting? Or is it not even pasting anything? We'll do this instead. There we go. My copy and pasting was not working. It seems like nothing is working today properly. It's always something when you're streaming. Alrighty. So we have our icons in place. We have our rooms in place. And just like with the actual rooms themselves, we can adjust the padding with our stack. So if we wanted, you know, maybe eight pixels in between each one or 16 or whatever it might be, any of those could work. But like I mentioned earlier, we may want to also indicate which room we are currently on. 
So we might be on the living room, for example. So we're gonna dive in here and make some changes. Now, we can actually create a separate component or a state for these, you know, the active room. So I'm gonna go ahead and press new state. I'll call this active. And we're gonna dive in here and we're gonna make some changes. Now we wanna really make sure that users know what room they're on. So in this case, we're gonna change this to a nice, maybe like a bluish purple or a blurple as some people call it. And the white text should look pretty good still, but this kind of icon in the background, we may wanna switch this up a little bit because the, the darker gray on the blue, it's not working quite nicely. So I'm gonna just change this to, actually maybe I'll just change this to our lighter color. And then this, I will sample our blurple in the background. And there we go. Now it's very easy to tell which room is the active room and which room is inactive. So ideally, if you had additional screens, you'd be able to click on maybe bedroom or kitchen or living room, and you'd be able to switch very easily between them all. Now, one thing you could do, and we're not gonna do this today, but you could also build in everything else below into these particular components. So you have your living room, right? You have your component for living room. You can build all of that directly in there. <laughs> Probably not Cornell. All right. Let me just make sure this lines up. Perfect, okay. So we have our rooms in place. Now, if you remember in the particular uh, preview that I showed off, we had this big thermostat at the top, right? And if I go over to, that's right, Twitter's video is just not looking very nice right now, but there's a big thermostat right here at the top, right? Actually, there's another, let me very quickly go on here. Here we go, here's another preview. It's a bit of an older preview, but there's a big thermostat at the top. Here's the light version as well. But it's kind of got this 3D, almost like skeuomorphic, pneumorphic kind of look. So we're gonna start designing that. And we're gonna start with the good old ellipse tool. Now you don't, probably don't want this too large, but you also want it large enough that you'll be able to very easily access the controls on this particular thermostat, right? So I'll make it a little bit larger. And that should do right about there. Now, because this is a darker version, we want to keep it dark, but also we don't want to we don't want to keep it too dark that it's kind of going to bl completely blend in with the background. So we're going to be adding a bunch of different elements that will allow it to pop out from the background. Things like, um, you know, a kind of an indent behind it, maybe a shadow, maybe a few shadows. And of course, we're going to experiment with gradients and so on and so forth. Now, starting off with the the base color, we're just going to add maybe a linear gradient. And we can imagine the light might be coming from the top you know, behind it. So there might be, it might be a bit lighter at the top than at the bottom. And this will also help us, you know, create a sense of depth. Now at the moment, this is blur blending in quite a bit and that's completely fine right now. Um, but you know, a little bit, we're going to start adding additional elements that will kind of make it pop a little bit and separate it from that background. Someone's asking about the toy faces. Um, if you actually just Google toy faces or someone can post a link in the chat, you should be able to find them pretty. I think they're still being sold, uh, possibly. Don't quote me on that, because I know Amrit has kind of uh, shifted to different things, but I think they're still being sold. All right, so we're gonna do that, and we might also want maybe a little bit of a bevel at the top, so something like an inner shadow. Maybe I'll drop the blur to about one, Y to about maybe one as well, and then add a touch of blue in there. Right. And then behind this, we may want to kind of inset it inside of a, almost like a, a bevel of, of sorts, right? So I can duplicate this shape. I'm gonna move it behind, make it a little bit larger. And here's where we're gonna get start getting a little bit experimental with some of the things that we're gonna be um, creating. So we're gonna create like an indent, right? That's going to, almost looks like it's gonna go into the, the background of this particular design, right? We're going to make it, I'm going to get rid of that inner shadow because it's kind of throwing everything off. The bottom's going to be a little bit darker, right? We're going to add maybe a little bit of a, actually we're going to add an inner shadow, but it's actually going to be on the bottom, right? 
And this is gonna kind of give a, a little bit of an appearance of depth down there, especially when we start adding a blur. So if I go ahead and go, let's say negative one, I'm gonna switch this over to a pure white, keep the opacity nice and dropped. And it's already looking like there's a little bit of a bevel down there, right? But I'm gonna add a bit of a object blur and let's go about one. And here's where we may need to start experimenting with a few different things, right? Two might be a little bit too much, but let's see how that looks, right? And the top, it looks like it needs to be a little bit darker. Perfect. All right. And then we, you know, behind this, we may also want a little bit, I know someone mentioned uh, a bulge. We may want to do something like that as well. So one more duplication, Command and Control D. We're going to make this even larger. It's looking a little bit crazy right now, but if we go ahead and at the top, we're going to make this a little bit lighter. And the bottom, we're going to keep it nice and dark. We may even want to go a little bit darker as well. And then we're going to add an object blur one more time, but we're going to blur it a little bit more than before. So it, it's starting to look like it's kind of protruding. And then there's an indent on top of that. And that's where the thermostat is actually going to sit. And if you want to, you can also experiment with the blend mode. So you can do something like soft light. That probably didn't work very well or overlay. But I think normal because there's really nothing back there, just a solid background we can definitely get away with just solid colors, right? And I can pull this down a touch as well. Maybe I'll drop the opacity a little bit so it's not too harsh at the bottom. All right, so we're getting there, right? Hopefully the stream is still looking good. Hopefully the audio started to sync a little bit. Probably didn't, but uh, we'll see. All right, so we're getting there, right? Now, what we want to do is add a fit. We want to add something that indicates, you know, what the hot temperatures are and what the cool temperatures are. So I'm going to duplicate this shape that's directly on top, bring it on in a little bit so we have a little bit of a border. And then we want to add a bit of a gradient. So the top, maybe the top right is going to be the hot temperatures and the bottom left are going to be the cool temperatures. So we'll do something like this. And then the top right, something like that. Now, when you're designing for a darker experience, you typically don't want to go too saturated. Like that and this probably won't work. Sometimes it may, but oftentimes it's just a little bit too much for our eyes. So we're gonna keep it fairly subtle. It looks a little bit strange right now, but it's going to get there. And then on top of this, just to add a bit of style, I might want to add a bit of a texture. So one more time, I'm going to duplicate. And then over in Finder, I do have some LED textures that I might want to use. I'm going to bring this directly in and then experiment with the blend mode just a little bit. Oops. Something like that, just to give it a little bit of a, an LED texture in the background. All right. Now, what we wanna do at this point is, you know, we're gonna get to adding some additional shading, additional highlights in just a moment, but we wanna add one more element on the inside. So I'm gonna duplicate this shape here. My layers are a complete mess right now, but I'm gonna duplicate this, and this is gonna be the actual faceplate of this thermostat. In terms of color, we don't probably don't need to make too many changes, but I might, might want to make it a little bit darker at the bottom. There we go. And then maybe I'll add a bit of a border. Perfect. All right. We're getting there, right? It's certainly not looking great. And if I take a look at my preview, we can see the potential in this particular design but it's not there yet. It's definitely missing a lot of shading. It's missing highlights. It's missing a whole bunch of different things. So what I want to do is let's start with the layer that we're currently have selected, which I'm going to name face plate. And the first thing we might want to do is just add a bit of a shadow. So I'm going to add a drop shadow. Let's pull it down a little bit. Maybe I'll drop the blur a touch and then bump up the opacity a little bit. Now, because it's kind of grazing the bluish red down at the bottom, we can potentially add a little bit of blue, just a little bit. 
There we go. All right. And then the shape in the background where we have our different temperatures, it looks kind of flat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this. Temps and temps. I think this is the texture, right? Nope, this is not the texture. I have everything wrong. So this is the temperatures. And this is the texture. And this is the back plate. So in this shape here, I'm going to add an inner shadow just so we have... And then in terms of the actual typeface, we could potentially get a little bit, oh, it's buffering again. Hmm. Yeah, I'm really at a loss as to what's going on. My internet looks completely fine. There's four drop frames, which is basically nothing. Um, YouTube says everything's okay right now. I'm, I'm at a loss. I'm not quite sure. I'll, I'll figure this out later. So we could, you know, keep it simple like this, or we could potentially try to get a little bit stylistic with our um, numbers here because it's everything's freezing now. Um, here we go. So yeah. what is going on? Okay, things are definitely things are happening and I have no idea what's happening. I refresh and it works looks great. I refresh and I'm delayed more, but the audio is in sync. I don't know what's happening. I'm I'm just hoping it's it's a YouTube thing and not a me thing. What is going on? <laughs> yeah, I have no idea. Now my keyboard's like freezing up. I don't know. Yeah, Drew says burn it. Whoops. Yeah, I'm not sure. Give me a second. Okay, this is this is fine over here. And this is I don't know. Things are weird. Back from the break and things are just breaking, right? It happens, I suppose. Yeah, my keyboard won't work on this document, but it works on the other document. Someone explain that to me. I certainly cannot. Technology is hard, I agree. All right, I guess I just won't use my keyboard over here. All right, so we have our temperature and you can definitely, you know, experiment with different typefaces. This one could potentially work. It's a little bit stylistic, but it's not too bad. This is Pi Pi. And is my keyboard gonna work it now? Oh, there we go, okay. Maybe it didn't like the Pi Pi typeface. So I guess I'll stick with something like Mighty, Mighty Slab, which is from Adobe Fonts. So you can definitely download it there. And then, you know, in terms of the color for this, you know, white's a little bit in our face, so we might want to drop it a touch, but you don't want to go too far down because then it's going to be very difficult to read, right? So we'll do something like this, and then maybe we'll add a little bit of a border around it, just so there's a bit of a bevel, and then possibly even an inner shadow. But we don't want to go too crazy with this inner shadow. We're going to keep it fairly subtle. Just to add a bit of a shadow on the inside. Something right, maybe right around 40% possibly. Maybe. Possibly. I don't know. We'll see what that looks like. And then possibly even a slight drop shadow. But very similar to our indent at the bottom. We might want... just to add a little bit of a, an edge down there. Just so it looks like it's kind of protruding into this particular shape, right? All right, is, are you gonna bring XD to After Effects? Masai is asking. Oh, so um, I think if, what you might be referring to is under the file menu, you can actually export to After Effects. Um, I don't use After Effects very often, so it would probably would be a strange video or tutorial for me. Um, so possibly not, but what I might do at some point is show you the process of going from After Effects to Lottie using the Lottie Files plugin so it syncs. Um, I do have a video that I have been working on. I ran into a few bugs on the plugin side. When those are 
uh, taken care of, I will be able to continue that. All right, and the final thing we might want to add on the inside of this, maybe just you know a few little dashes that kind of go around the side, just so that there's kind of an indicator where all the different temperatures are. Now, if I duplicate this and bring this in a little bit, what I can do is I only need the borders. So I'll set the borders and we can increase the dashes and the gaps until we have something that looks kind of interesting, right? Just something like that. And then I'll make this a little bit right about, want to make sure that 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 guy right up there is kind of uh, nice and flush. That should do something like that. That one right there is a little bit strange, but what we can do now is we can actually go into object path and then outline the stroke. That way we can have full um, access to this and we can just kind of finesse this into place. Definitely don't need that. All of these points. There we go. That should do. Perfect. And then even on this one, we could potentially get a little bit stylistic as well. Now that we've outlined this stroke, what we can do is maybe add a slight drop shadow. Probably don't need any blur on this. Definitely want to drop that opacity touch. Hmm. What else should we put on this? I want to keep it as subtle as possible. Maybe a little bit of a border. Ooh, that's not the border I want. There we go. Zero and zero. Drop that a little, there we go. So if you take a look, if we really zoom in here, there's like a bevel, there's a little bit of a drop shadow, there's, you can even add an inner shadow, but when you zoom out, you kind of have this kind of look that looks like it's kind of going into this particular uh, faceplate, right? Which I might want to actually just tweak the colors just a little bit. There we go. And you can potentially, you know, we have a linear gradient. You can, if you really want more of a, a bulbous look to this, you can also experiment with a radial gradient. And you can kind of move this up a little bit. Right. So you have a nice highlight at the top and you have this darker area at the bottom, completely up to you, depending on which kind of style you're looking for. I think a linear gradient is probably fine in this particular case. So we're going to stick with that there. And then the last thing I might want to add in terms of text is maybe a little bit of an indicator as to what exactly is going on right now. So maybe, maybe the house is currently heating. Now this is gonna be a lot smaller than the 72 down at the bottom. So I'm gonna make, I'm gonna revert back to something like Rustica. There we go. And then I might wanna go maybe medium metallic. All right, and then finally, you know, on, depending on the system that you're using, and of course, depending on whether it's cooling or heating, you might want a little more of a visual indicator. So one interesting th thing you can potentially do is on this, either directly on it or on another layer, add a, maybe a little bit of a, a red glow at the bottom. So if I duplicate this one last time, this will probably be the last time I duplicate it. We can add a little bit of a red down at the bottom. Maybe at the top, it'll just drop down to 0% opacity. And over here, we probably don't want it to go too high up. 
There's a little bit of red down there, right? And then you can experiment with the different blend modes if necessary. You may want, you may not want, completely up to you. Hard light might be a little bit too much, but it's not terrible, right? And you can also, like the faceplate itself, experiment with a radial gradient, right? So I can make this a little bit larger. It's kind of interesting, right? Something like that. That could do. Now, the one other thing that I might want to add before we move on to something else, uh, will, uh, Cornell's asking, will there be radial drop shadow? I mean, something like light source in XD. Probably not anytime soon, but that might be something interesting we might see in the future. Um, the last thing I might want to add is maybe, you know, down here on the side, a little bit more of a, an edge, so it almost looks like it's 3D, and then, of course, a shadow behind it. So we have this bevel right down here at the bottom, right? And it looks okay, but I'm gonna actually bring this in a little bit and tweak the colors a touch. But what I want to do is right behind it on the bottom add a bit of an edge. So if I duplicate this, I can move this down a little bit and then experiment with my radial gradient. So it might be a little bit lighter there and then down at the bottom, it's gonna be a little bit darker. Something like that, maybe. And on this edge here, I might add a little bit of a border just so that there's a touch of separation there. I might be able to just change this to a solid color because they're very similar. Right? And then the indent, I'm actually going to increase that a little bit. And then finally, we might want, you know, a bit of a, a longer shadow towards the bottom. So if I... Duplicate. There's a lot of duplicating in this particular masterclass. I'm going to drag this down. Maybe move it in just a little bit. But for here, we want something a little bit darker towards the inside. And then down at the bottom, we're going to drop this down to zero. And then add a bit of an object blur. Just so we have a very subtle shadow. And of course, I can edit the, sh the actual path a little bit. Just pull that in. And then once I add these shadows, it's kind of taken away from that indent a little bit. So I might want to make sure that I make some changes back there. And then bump up that inner shadow so we can see it. There we go. Ooh, that didn't work. So there's the shadow. Now, one other thing is, you know, this shadow here, because I have a solid linear gradient towards the top, it's kind of blocking some of the elements behind it. So I might just want to switch this over to something like multiply or even soft light. That way it still kind of brings in some of those elements back there. There we go. A lot of this really comes down to experimentation. So kind of going back and forth between all your different elements and figuring out what colors work, what colors don't work, and kind of going from there, right? There we go. All right, so it's starting to take shape. And, and you know, things like this, especially when you're trying to mimic 3D and skeuomorphic design and things like that, these things will take time. A lot of trial and error, a lot of experimentation, a lot of revisions, right? So I'm gonna probably have to go through and you know, tweak this edge a little bit, maybe add a bit of an inner shadow at the bottom, maybe negative three and blur this quite a bit. There we go. I don't know how well it comes through on the actual stream, but it's starting to kind of have a little bit of a 3D look to it, right? Temperatures, I might want to tweak a little bit, maybe make them a touch darker. There we go. This faceplate here. 
experiment with the border, maybe make a darker border instead. So it has a bit of an edge possibly. And then the inner shadow on top. Now, one thing to consider is, you know, the inner shadow on top is mostly, you know, white and a little bit of blue. But at the top here, we have our, you know, warmer tones. So we have our, uh, you know, our red. So we might want to just add a little bit of red up there. Just so it almost looks like it's reflecting that red. And then just drop the opacity a touch. Masai is saying, asking, how long did you experiment with this design? So I think I, actually mostly yesterday I was working on it. Um, still not completely happy with it, but it will, it'll take shape at some point. Again, these things take time, and as you continue to make revisions and as you sleep on it, come back, notice a few things that look a little bit off, you know, it definitely starts looking a little bit better. And a lot of this, this is what I do for most of the day. I just kind of, you know, experiment with these, you know, different colors, different, uh, different shading, shadows, all that fun stuff until things look kind of doable, right? That's not going to work. Nope. Okay. Well, we're going to leave it at that. I'm going to make sure to group all of these elements here. And this will be called our dial. Now, speaking of dial, we need, of course, a way to actually change the temperature. So that'll probably be the last thing we're going to do is right about here. We might want to add maybe a little circle up here at the top. And this is going to be the actual element that users will be able to, you know, drag to a different temperature. So for this, very similar to some of the other elements, we might want maybe a linear gradient. Maybe it'll be a little bit lighter at the top, a little bit darker at the bottom. We'll add a little bit of a border, a bit of an sh inner shadow at the top as well. And then a drop shadow to separate it from the dial behind it. And then in the middle, we might want a little bit of a divot so it looks like you can kind of physically put your finger there and move it. Now, to make this a little bit easier, what we would do is just kind of swap the position of the linear gradient. The inner shadow would go on the bottom this time, or you can add a drop shadow as well in replacement of the inner shadow. So maybe one and zero, and then drop that down. Now we're, we are very much zoomed in, so it's looking a little bit straight. But I think that should work, right? And maybe one more back out. The shadow at the bottom is looking a little bit strange, but for the most part, it does look like I can, you know, grab, put my finger on it and then kind of slide it around to make this a little bit larger. Something like that. And that could do. I think an inner shadow looks a little bit better than that drop shadow does. Alrighty, so that's going to wrap things up for today. I do apologize for all the streaming issues. I'm going to look into it. I don't see anything really on my end that would indicate that it's coming from my setup, but it's possible. It, it is possible. So I'll take a look at that stuff. I'm going to be back next week with another XD Masterclass. Kyle T. Webster is coming up in just a few minutes with his Illustration Masterclass, and I'll see you all next week. Thanks, everyone.